Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. You know, when we were kids, we read about uh, revolutionaries. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Lenin, Stalin, Mao, and so forth. Well, it brings me great pleasure to bring to the table a totally different type of revolutionary, Nathan Toothman. He's the co-founder of Elevate Structure, which we'll be talking about. But before that, he was a nuclear sub-officer. Be aware. He's also the owner of Bear Engineering. He is a licensed civil engineer. And he is here to almost literally turn homes on their head. And we have so much material to cover. And Nathan, welcome to the show. And let's bring up the first slide and let's get rolling. Because Thanks, we got to roll fast here. <laughs> Thanks, Howard. Thanks a lot for uh, having me here. Um, so I just wanted to kind of go over some uh, updates on Elevate and, and introduce it. And um, you can go back to the previous slide there. Um, you know, I've been on the show a couple times and we've talked about different uh, versions of it. But mm -hmm. this entirely uh, new version here um, is a different spin in that it has a lot more um, opportunities, a lot more flexibility in the structure. And so I just wanted to first kind of introduce, introduce that. And then um, over time, it kind of becomes clear. So if we can show the um, desk view here. Um, if you can zoom down the other camera. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, so this is um, a, a form of what Elevate um, has been inspired to um, turn into in the sense that this would be a kind of a, a starting position for it. Um, and it's a very wide, very um, large structure with very symmetric, um, simple members mm -hmm. with a pivot point. So it's a very easy structure to assemble, um, and that's kind of what you see here is it just pivots amongst, uh, amongst a certain point and comes up into its elevated position, hence the term elevate structure. Now this could be a group of homes or one home or a whole neighborhood or? So, so the original concept was kind mm -hmm. of a, a micro home concept, like mm -hmm. an individual home, a small home, a raised home, elevated um, for a number of reasons, uh, safety from um, items below, um, better views, better breezes, a uh, large void in the middle for water storage. Um, and so that, that was kind of the initial concept. Mm -hmm. But then as we realized, as we came up with this radial um, design for the support structure, when it's in its down position, now it creates a really efficient um, structure that can then be used for very low cost housing. Mm -hmm. And so each of these um, cells here is about 100 square feet. So you're looking at 1,200 square feet around the radial area and 200 square feet in the center. Um, and the center could be either manned or it could be a courtyard sort of mm -hmm, area. Mm -hmm. But different covering options, uh, fabric architecture could be one, prefab panels, uh, others, floor, walls, ceiling. Um, but it's a very efficient way to do a structure. It gets a lot of strength from the, the radial balance of it. And again, it's very easy to assemble, um, very quick. Um, can be set up in a couple hours by a couple people. Um, and, and it can this, be, this could be a whole bunch of people living in, one person per structure or? Yeah, it could or, be a range. One yeah. of the things we want and we like is flexibility mm -hmm. is it can adapt to whoever the customer is and the culture and how they mm -hmm. want to use it. So mm -hmm. each person could get one. Um, you could even divide these up into two, so two 50 square foot areas. Um, and then, but it creates this community sort of feel and that mm -hmm. it's centered mm -hmm. around this courtyard. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it kind of kind of inward, inward looking structure to give some security there. But it's, it's a different, um, thing that we're kind of yeah, just that. evolved into, um, uh, you know, innovation aspect is it just kind of things come up that, that you see mm -hmm. and then it mm -hmm. comes into other aspects. This is revolutionary, yes. Um, but then, so it, it's, but it's really, a, it's transformable, really multifunction in that when you bring it up, this is still kind of one of the core aspects of, of Elevate is, you know, the when mm -hmm. it's up. Um, and so what do we do with it? That's, that's kind of question. I mean, it started on a, mm -hmm. on a purpose. Um, and it's, you know, as you come along through different iterations, different things come up and you see different things and you kind of explore that route and that area. And so now what we want to do with this is we want to make an impact and we mm -hmm. want to make an impact mm -hmm. in the areas of global housing because we think we have a good solution both in the up position and in the down position. 
and then also making an impact relative to climate change. Um, so if you can go to the next few slides here. Uh, and next slide. Uh, next slide. Okay, so, so this is kind of where the inspiration point was here, was um, as a point on the North Shore. And that's kind of what inspired the concept, was a tree um, to blend in, to be safer, to um, fit the site. And so it kind of, it went from that uh, along a, a process of uh, evolving and evolution to this. So then the next slide, please, relative to um, there, you see the images going through. You can go to the next one. That's kind of the process we went through there. Next slide. Radial balance, we, we kind of went through that. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Keep going. Um, keep going, one more. And that's kind of the simple parts. We'll come back to a couple of these. Keep going. Okay, so here for the, the climate change impact is, so is, is what we see that can happen with this structure is that because it's inspired by a tree and it, um, mm -hmm. can, it can look like a tree, it can fit in in the same, same sense as a tree can. It can fit in places that no other structure can. So in a sense, we're sort of hacked nature to, to bring a structure into places that other structures can't fit. You know, now, it's got a small... Go ahead. You use the word heck, and I keep seeing that more and more, generally used the, uh, among young people. What in this instance is heck? Well, heck like, nature. you know, hacking, yeah. um, obviously when you hack into like a, a computer system, you mm -hmm. gain entry. You use like a tricky way to, to get into it, mm -hmm. to figure a different way around that wasn't initially thought to um, gain an advantage mm -hmm. from that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, a, a term that we're borrowing relative to okay. um, the so, structures. So in this, in this case, it's, it's a positive term rather It's a than positive like, term, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. a lot of terms, that, you know, it's used in a positive way mm -hmm. when, when you hack something to make it better mm -hmm. um, or find a new way to do something with it. And so, so this is using a nature theme to put something where other structures can't fit because it's got a really small impact area on the base here. Yeah. So 50 yeah. square foot here, 200 square foot above, that's a, a fourfold increase of space. And so people can still walk underneath of it, you get shade, um, and that helps with walkable cities. Um, the aesthetics of the outside are important such that it blends in. And we'll talk about some of the different um, revisions of that. But it's using that, that concept. Um, and so relative to impacts we see for it, if you can go to the next yeah, slide. Yeah. Um, so as we see this as a test bed um, for different technologies up in the upper area here. Um, and so in this case here, we have um, CO2 scrubbing panels and we have smog removal walls. So it's uh, using some exist existing technologies and testing different technologies in cities that have issues with pollution and other areas of, I don't know, obviously um, CO2, is to scrub that from the air in core areas of a city that wouldn't otherwise be achievable. Yeah, I've, I've read about the uh, CO2 scrubbers, and there was something green there, obviously, called plants. Yeah. They're, they're the ultimate CO2 scrubbers. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're kind of in just enhancing that, because the original concept, mm -hmm. as you've seen the structure before, was, was lined with plants. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's mm -hmm. a natural method for it. And, and that'll still be present on very many of the um, revisions of this. So mm -hmm. we're looking at ways also mm -hmm. to enhance that, to make it more than what you get from just one tree. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, um, well, obviously, this would be multiple trees or it could be shrubbery hanging from the, the walls and so forth. Yeah, yeah, it could, yeah. could, could, could be a, a variety of um, looks and iterations of these 12 cells that can test out different aspects and different mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. features of that, including different yeah. ways to capture, um, you know, make electricity. Um, solar is an obvious fit for the roof. Obvious, yeah. um, there can be solar leaves. They're, they're making now uh, leaves that, like mm -hmm, fake leaves mm -hmm. that are solar powered. Yeah, uh, mini the, wind the, turbines. Yeah, the, the leaves are more efficient than real life photo photosynthetic yeah, leaves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's finding a lot of different ways to creatively use nature to our benefit in ways mm -hmm, that haven't mm -hmm. been thought of um, Very before. Very visionary. Um, so, so what do we have on our next slide then? Um, and yeah. so it's, it, it's, yeah, it, it has a very strong commercial each, aspect each to it. Each slide is getting, the, the concept is getting yeah, larger the concept and larger. Yeah, it's, it's a very yeah. visual concept too. Mm -hmm. but so here, here you see the commercial aspect of it. So it's, it's intended to really stand on its own merits, whether or not it has any eco aspects to it or not. Um, but in, in this case, the concept here is that the, small, that the area in the bottom is used for a small business, like a, mm -hmm. a coffee kiosk, mm -hmm. a tea business, a juice shop, a small retail. Um, and then this volume up above can be used to store items and then tap into that um, and lower it down. So, so that's, that's one used to fit more for small businesses as they get driven out from cities and back into a city. 
uh, but do it in an aesthetic way that, that fits in. Um, and then another really good use that we've, that's kind of come up through our research was using it for a placemaking structure. So a city sometimes wants to bring people together and, and activate Absolutely, a space and get yeah. people to watch the, the football game or the basketball game. Yeah. I mean, or, that, that's what makes a city, is bringing people yeah, together. Right, right, for, right. Uh, yeah, so, so common interest, yeah. That's, that's what this can do, mm -hmm. is essentially, in the version you saw on that previous slide, if you bring that back up, during, during the day it kind of hides itself as a tree. And then <laughs> at nighttime, <laughs> the, the walls open. Or in this case, we have um, in the center area that is wider. Um, and so it's a projector or an LED screen, and then the community can come around and gather it, watch, watch the movie on it. Um, company can be selling popcorn out of the base or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, or, or you could have vendors around that. Yeah, area yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. Vendors around it mm -hmm. and just kind of activate a place, make it fun, make it enjoyable. Um, and so the, as you have something that's really tall in a big open area, it, it makes it really viewable and really visible from a distance. And so you can project really important images on that, and you can show fun stuff. Um, but you can also show things then relative to climate change. That's how it kind of ties back to that aspect, is more awareness. So this is kind of like an iconic structure in an area. If it's doing um, improvements for the environment, that you can then learn about it as well. Um, and so it kind of it, it gives importance to that. And it's a way cities mm -hmm. or, or groups can, can show that importance to it and yeah. then practically make a difference. So it's not going to solve all the problems, but it's a step towards them. Wow. Whew. We have time for one more slide before our break. What, you, you're just bringing up so much stuff here. Well, I mean, you know, this is, um, <laughs> we've been at this for a while, but we do have a defined plan to, um, to make this happen. So we built the first prototype. We'll get to one of those pictures at the end. That's over in um, Kailua. And we built that about a year and a half ago. Um, but, but now we're at a stage where, where this structure alone that, that you see here can fit in the back of a van. Oh, okay, so we can, we can set it up for a few hours, we can set it up for a few days, and we can show it off, we can test it. We can test it really rapidly. So we think we now have a really good minimum viable product that we can take around and get a, a ton of feedback on what's, what works, what doesn't work, where, where is it really fitting. Um, so now, that's one of the first next steps. What would you about the walls? I mean, this is this is the frame. Yeah. But just the frame itself isn't too impressive. So, it, just in a few hours with a little material, what what would you do yeah, to the, cover the walls? The, the, the walls um, is just like a lift up panel that you just mm -hmm. lift up and, and hang mm -hmm. on a um, hook at the top. Mm -hmm. So the panels are pretty lightweight, um, and so it's some something to use design. The whole concept is that every piece is less than fifty pounds. So two people can carry every one of those pieces and, and hang them on there and then take them off. Um, mm. And so th th there'd be permanent, more longer-term installations where it's more anchored down, it's more um, you know, fixed for a longer yeah, term. But yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it runs a span from, from you know, two, day, two hours to two years, the time that it can be up, depending on the location and mm -hmm. the, the needs of that area. And then it would be accompanied by a lot of publicity in the beginning, come and see this. Yeah, that, it's, that, it's, that, it's something that's yeah. you know, obviously different, so it's not mm -hmm. hard to draw people to it. Um, when, when we first built the prototype, there was you know, interest in you know, what mm -hmm. is that. So it, it would naturally gain some attention yeah, on social, social media, yeah, um, yeah. things like that. So. Well, on that cheery note, we need to take a very brief break. Howard Wig, Think Tech Hawaii with Nathan, <coughs> Nathan Toothman, revolutionary and visionary, back in a minute. Hi, this is uh, Jane Sugimura. I'm the co-host for Condo Insider, and we're on Think Tech Hawaii every Thursday at 3 o'clock, and we're here to talk about uh, condominium living and uh, issues that affect condominium residents and owners, and I hope you'll join us every week on Thursday. Aloha. Hi, I'm Stan Energy Man, and I want you to be here every Friday. Noon, thinktechhawaii.com. Watch the show. Be there. I pity the fool who ain't. Hello, this is Martin Despang. I want to get you get excited about my new show, which is Humane Architecture for Hawaii and Beyond. We're going to broadcast on Tuesdays, 5 p.m. here on uh, Think Tech Hawaii. Hi, I'm Stacy Hayashi, and you can catch me on Mondays at 11 on Think Tech Hawaii. Stacy to the rescue. See you then. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham with Think Tech Hawaii, and I'd like to ask you to come watch my show, The Economy and You, each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Good afternoon once more. Howard Wake, Cold Green, Think Tech Hawaii. I have with me Nathan Toothman, nuclear engineer, licensed 
civil engineer and head of his own company, which is revolutionary and we're talking about whole new concepts. You're, you're, just, you're still in the idea stage. You've got something permanent up in Kailua or you've, uh, yeah. So, so why don't we uh, get right into where we are now and then maybe we can jump back to, to some of the uh, other slides there. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is the, the oh, prototype we built yeah. in um, Kailua. And so this is kind of the Rev 1.0 um, along the lines of a mm -hmm. micro home. Um, and, and it's really, I mean, it's, it's evolved as things do. Um, but it's really important that, that, we, that we did this to get to where we are now because it, it really helped refine the design. It helped get people interested in it. Um, helped attract a team. Now, now this is a real, this is not Photoshop. This is no, a no, real that's a real, real structure. Yeah, that's, wow. that's a real structure. Um, and so mm -hmm. it, it's really important in, for our sense in this, um, for what we're trying to do to have done something and then, you know, really learn from it mm -hmm. rapidly mm -hmm. and um, take, take from it what we learned and go further with it. So yeah, you, you can use all the modeling under the world. Well, you're, you're an engineer, you know all about modeling. Yeah. But you have to get it out into the real world. Yeah. And then stuff happens. Right. Yeah. You yeah. have to build something. Um, yeah. So we, yeah. we studied it for a long time before mm -hmm. we built it. Um, but there's no way to tell how where it's going to, mm -hmm. you know, eventually end up. And there's still not. But we have something now that we can rapidly prototype. Like I said, we can fit this in the back of a van, transport it around, and the area we'll be doing this is the Bay Area, um, mm -hmm. and um, get get a lot of feedback both from the um, up the down structure and the up structure. So. In, in this sense here, you know, we, the next goal was two prototypes. One we transport around, the second one is kind of like a mini headquarters. So we kind of operate out of this down position. Like, what, you know, what do these spaces feel like? How much mm -hmm, space is mm -hmm. it? Uh, what are different roof type structures that we could do for it? Um, you know, how, how to use that. So really personally use it as well. Because that's one of the, the best ways is to... Nothing is, uh, you, like hands-on experience. Hands-on, yeah. personal yeah, experience. Yeah. Um, and it, it helps to not have to talk about these things so much. And mm -hmm, when you have mm -hmm. something that you can come to and visit, um, it helps, you know, it's best, it better to show than yeah, to tell, yeah, obviously. Yeah. I've, so I've worked with so many engineers on so many concepts, and it looks so good. And then you get out onto the street. And yeah. <laughs> stuff happens here. So, but, and for you guys, your team, to actually physically experience it, there is absolutely nothing like that. Yeah, it's been really important. And yeah. Like I said before, it helped really attract the team. So we have a, a great architect working with us, Dennis Olmsted. Martin Desbang has helped out mm -hmm. a ton. Mm -hmm. um, my wife's been really central to this from the start. She's a civil engineer as well. Um, we attracted a material scientist that's now working with us who also has a background in 3D printing. So that's been um, really valuable for us. Um, an MBA guy from Stanford, and also a software engineer. So we got a kind of a, a techie team, um, and that's what we're trying to do here too. Is mm -hmm. we're really taking what was a simple, a fairly simple concept and a simple construction method. Like the prototype you saw was giant I beams and standard um, framing. Mm -hmm. And so now it's, we were challenged by some individuals in Silicon Valley who've done a lot in the area of innovation to you know, expand what's possible and, and add more um, technology to it, mm -hmm. um, bring the cost down significantly. Um, so we, we realized that early on the cost was just, it needs to be really radically different in the cost standpoint. Well, and that, one, that's what we think. One thing done. that comes to mind immediately when, now that you're mentioning it, is uh, carbon fiber yeah. as a material. Yeah, it's yeah. It's light, it's stronger than heck. Yeah. It'll take a licking and keep on ticking. Right, it's, yeah. it's an extremely mm -hmm. you know, great material. And so we've thought about areas relative to um, wraps, like just the, the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. What's the minimum wrap that you need to give as a support and then maybe use other materials? Because obviously carbon fiber is really expensive mm -hmm. now and it, it probably will be for a while. So we're really looking and seeing what parts of it can really improve by adding yeah, innovative yeah. materials. Yeah, um, well, well, you know something about stress being a civil engineer. Yeah. So what, what are the high stress yeah, points? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's where it'll help too to, to build this prototype when it's mm -hmm. down and up is that, that you can really see like let's really focus on this area let's add a lot more to it in, in that area um, 3d printing is another area like this whole structure was 3d printed mm -hmm. um, but 3d printers mm -hmm. right now aren't really at this size like this is 45 feet across mm -hmm. and these individual mm -hmm. members are 14 feet but w w what areas can we really add value um, so one area might be the a roof so roofs are really important Part of yes. the structure, and so it does. It plays a lot of roles too. You know, it needs to have ventilation. It captures solar. Um, 
It mm -hmm. provides lighting. Oh, and then, then you mentioned water capture also, didn't you? Or? Yeah, 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 the, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. The, the other aspect is that water capture, and that's really oh, what this. Yeah, here, here we have this, it on the slide here. Yeah, yeah here, here's some of the technical things yeah. we want to push forward further: is more mm -hmm. uh, 3D printing, looking at a roof first. Uh, 3D printing of foundations. No one's done that that we've found. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how do you you know, possibly do that? Then also another big one is, is um, self-sufficient from a water and wastewater standpoint. Um, and so one of the things I do as a civil engineer is design wastewater systems. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, there, there's ways that it could really be houses could be more self-sufficient if, if it's allowed and it's proven. Um, even in more urban areas. So we still have septic systems, of course. That's a, it's just a basically a septic system, but you're making it to where it really fits in with the house. Uh, making water systems that are really efficient to be off the grid from water. And so there's, there's, those are some of the kind of initial concepts with Elevate was to store water in the base, in the trunk of the tree. So this mm -hmm. void here, that, that was the whole original concept was this is the giant cistern that your house sits on top mm -hmm. of. And so mm -hmm. it's just evolved from that. But th those components are still there, those aspects are still there. Um, it's just um, kind of evolving. Wow. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's. What? I don't even know where to go from here. Well, let's uh, let's yeah. go back to the one with the um. What's slide number six? Or this one here? Oh, uh, slide seven. Seven. If could, uh, yeah. If we could go back to slide seven. Um, which one? one? What? That's one. The next, next one, one after that. Yeah, here, here we go. So, so here here's, we go. you know, yeah. when, whenever yeah. we built the initial structure, we had the plants uh, on it, you could really feel a cooling effect as the breeze would blow across the plants. And that's mm -hmm. a pretty well-known natural phenomenon, evapotranspiration, mm -hmm. kind of like a swamp cooler. Um, but this is an area that we can start doing some, some testing. Like, wh what is that impact of the living walls around the structure as far as the temperature, um, mm -hmm. cooling from the wind, and then also the insulating properties of that? Um, and so there hasn't been structures that are, you know, this small, all raised up around to test and monitor. Mm -hmm. So we think that's, that's another thing we want to be able to test, get some data behind it, see what the efficiency of that is. Um, and the living wall systems we, we built were like a pre-made panel and that was spaced off of the structure. So it's not going to, it's going to get airflow. It's not going to rot. The water's controlled. It's a very mm -hmm. controlled mm -hmm. system. It's just not a bunch of plants stuck on wood. Um, and so there's ways to do it practically. There's ways to then maybe 3D print the, the uh, walls that have that living wall part integrated into it and the water catchment and filtering into it. So it's a really well done system to make the living walls very practical. Um, and then it's, it's great to, for looks and also for edible mm -hmm. plants. And so there's a lot, there's a lot of yeah, practical reasons yeah, yeah. for that, but that's not, yep. it, it's not a requirement of the structure. Um, ed, ed, edible plants, now there's, there's a uh, concept. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing I, you know, cher cherry, in our climate, cherry tomatoes are yeah. really, really easy to uh, grow. Yeah, there, there's a lot so, of movement yeah. toward, towards that grow your own food, mm -hmm. social sustainability communities. And then in the lower yeah. and down position, you know, what if we, if we draw air in and have that kind of a stack effect out, the, out of the center? And mm -hmm. how do we cool mm -hmm. a very large area? Um, and this is more in developing countries and stuff where we, yeah. would, where we would use this, where, um, you know, there's, you got to do a lot with very little. And, but how can we get a comfortable environment from airflow through a structure like this, either incorporating living walls or other technologies um, to make this a really um, yeah. feasible mm -hmm. mass um, solution for housing in areas. That's also very transportable, right? Every piece of this can be then taken apart in a few hours and taken somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this foundation base here is all made to level to the ground that it matches. So within mm -hmm. a four degree mm -hmm. slope, it has hinges on each end to get it level. Oh my you gotta, goodness! You, every, ground generally slopes for drainage, um, and so th that's factored into all wow. that. So it's really, it's trying to prethink a lot of the basic things that go wrong mm. with structures. Um, well, here, here you see yeah. some of the, the basic drawings of it's just seven parts to make this core structure. Um, ten thousand dollars for half material, half labor to fabricate this. So it's a really efficient way to make a structure with these just two by two tubular steel. Yeah. And, and again, you, you're thinking of 3D printing when you um, yeah. manufacture these? Yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah, definitely yeah. some parts. I mean, right now it's definitely mm -hmm. cheaper to make a two by two giant S-shaped member out of just tubular steel that you weld mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. you know, there's no way to compete mm -hmm. with that. That's, that's a very low cost sort of yeah. way. Yeah. But there's other parts where we could add a lot to it, maybe in the hinge area and you know, in, in the roof area, maybe in the foundation piece. And then over time, as the, the cost of 3D printing becomes as low as anything, then it could, mm -hmm. you know, anything can happen. 
Yeah, and speaking of uh, dollars, I understand that there's a major, major foundation that might be interested in you, or? Well, I mean, there's, there's um, all kinds of interesting things out, out there. Um, mm -hmm. There's um, the Breakthrough Energy Fund is one that's come out recently. Um, but there, there's a lot of movement around the um, green space and- uh, Absolutely, um, yeah. You know, actually doing something uh, mm -hmm. about it, making mm -hmm. um, decisions not based just on the pure financial return, but more um, social and yeah. uh, ecological return. Well, we, to talk about the need for housing, you know, we are a first world country, or Hawaii is a first world state, but the need for housing is just aching yeah, out there. Yeah. And uh, our, we've been trying to realize that in fits and starts and in very expensive ways. So. Yeah, I, th I think we yeah. found that the, there's we need different ideas besides the status quo type structure. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But a lot of those status quos are driven by building codes, right? Yep, so I'm, yep. I'm not ignorant to any of that. But there's also um, changes that can happen over time um, in a stepwise manner. Mm -hmm. Well, Bill, I, I'm a building code guy myself. I can yeah. say that building codes are flexible. They are dynamic. You just have to meet the basic health and safety right. issues, and then you're pretty well free to go from there if you can persuade the officials. Right, and we, we try to always that. think yeah. about that from the start. You know, I'm a, mm -hmm. a licensed engineer and uh, yeah. I'm a licensed architect. I got, mm -hmm. like, like people working on it that know the basic science and the basic requirements and regulations. Um, and so that's you know, a really critical part that at the end it's based on reality and not fiction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, which is why I really like the fact that you guys personally, your team, you're going to do what I call get uh, dirt under your fingernails. Oh, yeah. You and go get, and, yeah. you got to get dirty. You look at a, a lot of innovations mm -hmm. or things. It's just you think of it, and then you do it, and you physically mm -hmm. do it, mm -hmm. um, and that's the way it advances. Because uh, there's no one else that really understands exactly why that is. Mm -hmm. Like So it's hard to convince to, to do things. It's best to sometimes yeah. do it yourself. Yep, absolutely. Th Thomas Edison being the best example of that. But we could go on and on, but we can't go on and on because it's time to close Think Tech Hawaii Code Green. My esteemed guest, Nathan Toothman, revolutionary and everything else. And I certainly wish you all the best, Nathan. I mean, this could be the start of something really, really big. I'm thinking of homeless shelters, uh, the whole business. Thanks, Alex. Possibilities are endless.